National Guard and other agencies in Wisconsin will test its preparedness and communication in five northeast Wisconsin counties over three days in Midway. The exercise called Dark Sky will simulate a long-term mass power outage. What happens if my power would be out for 24, 48, 72 hours, or maybe 37 days? That includes responders from federal, state, and local levels, encompassing private utility groups, the FBI, and fire departments. The what-ifs is what we're trying to do, is fill in those spots for the what-ifs. It will be all hands on deck here in Amro with the police, fire department, and the Red Cross taking part in the exercise dark sky the training kicks off on may 15th and lasts for three days different counties have different roles with dane county serving as a communicator in between one way to get at america and an easy way quite frankly is through an emp attack an electromagnetic pulse attack consider every major city in america how does it get its water supply consider that every major city in america its average food supply on hand is 21 to 28 days. Consider, where do we get our medication? Consider what happens in nursing homes and hospitals. What happens to our transportation grid? Anything driven that, well, most of them have computers and they're all gone. An electromagnetic pulse that can cripple everything from stoplights to computers to the defense grid. An electromagnetic pulse attack, also known as an EMP, could be devastating. It could easily damage the country's critical infrastructure, especially the electrical grid. If a terrorist organization or North Korea or Iran detonated just a single nuclear weapon, a single nuclear weapon at high altitude over the United States, you know, it would destroy the electric grid and our critical infrastructures and put at risk the lives of up to 90% of the American people. You know, we all depend directly or indirectly. We all live directly or indirectly off of electricity or electronic civilization. Ninety percent, let me repeat that, ninety percent of all Americans will die within 12 to 18 months after an EMP event. This study was done in 2008. Has anything been done since? No. If it sounds far-fetched, consider that last July, a steamer owned by Iran's ally, North Korea, was found in Panama hiding nuclear-capable SA-2 missiles under 10,000 tons of sugar. Experts believe Russia has given EMP technology to North Korea. In our highly connected, just-in-time, efficient technological civilization to cause chaos that could cause tens of millions of Americans to die before it's sorted out. Tens of millions? Tens of millions, because if you have no electric power for six months to a year, you have no food delivery, you have no gasoline, you have no water, uh, you know, you think about that, it's pretty bad. Well, that's a horrifying uh, possibility. How are we protecting against that happening? We're not. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be three days. Today, the old duck and cover films from Cold War days seem campy and quaint. To many, a nuclear blast and its resultant electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, seems so unimaginable, so unlikely, that few worry about it, and fewer still take any precautions. It's not real, uh, and it's something out of a James Bond movie. The general consensus is that it, it is not a real threat. It's not imminent by any stretch of the imagination. We have uh, inf information, for example, the data from actual high altitude nuclear detonations that were conducted by us and the Russians back in the 1961-62 time, time frame that not, did things like knock the lights out in Hawaii. An EMP is a short burst of electromagnetic energy that all nuclear explosions produce to varying degrees. A large EMP triggered over the United States from an orbiting nuke at the right altitude could fry the circuitry of cell phones, render electronic banking, automobile computers, railways, air traffic control, and airplanes themselves useless. Food would rot in refrigerators and in farm fields with no means of transporting agri-products to population centers. In the following weeks and months, a truly Mad Max world would evolve. Dr. Pry believes a naivete about EMP pervades the Western democracies, where nukes are kept mostly out of sight and out of mind. But for totalitarian and authoritarian states, as in the case of Iran, and possibly North Korea, uh, nuke, the use of nuclear weapons is not only thinkable, but in their 
open source military doctrine. You know, they've written for years about being able to win a nuclear war, that you can fight a nuclear war. Adding to EMP worries, North Korea's recent successful test of a solid-fueled ballistic missile. The solid fuel needs less preparation, meaning less warning time for those targeted. In addition, North Korea also has at least two observation satellites that orbit over the U.S. at an altitude ideal for an EMP attack. If the lights went out, it's more than just the lights. Explain what could actually happen to people if there's a massive cyber attack. Well, in a place like Manhattan, for example, if the power goes out, you know how the fire department and the police spend the first couple of days getting people out of stalled elevators? You're talking about a community of, what, 8 million people? The food in a place like Manhattan would run out in a couple of days. New York State has several million MREs, meals ready to eat. But when you take several million and you do Start stocking up now, buy some canned food, stack it away. Divide it by 8 million. You're talking about maybe a two or three day food supply. Mm. What happens on day four? If someone exploded a high altitude nuclear weapon in the United States, the electromagnetic pulse would affect all the electronics within line of sight of that burst. Were the blast to occur high enough, the entire continental United States would be left with no electric power or the things that depend on electric power. Medical services wouldn't be available because they need electric power. Telephones wouldn't work. The traffic lights would stop working. Big traffic jam. Transportation would be shut down. Electronic funds transfer wouldn't work, so you wouldn't get your paycheck. You wouldn't be able to use your credit card. Food stocks would run out very quickly. Everything we know about life today that makes it can Couldn't even drive a car. It runs off a battery and a chip that's in a computer. Being inefficient would be shut down. The day after an EMP attack, the configuration of the country would be more like that around 1800. The problem is that the country had a very small population at that time compared to the 300 million people who live here today. There would be a buy a bicycle, but even then, like, there's going to be no businesses open, so I don't know what you want the bicycle for real challenge to keeping our population even alive, much less strong and viable after a high altitude EMP event. Now remember, God is going to allow this because this is going to be a warning to people who have rejected Yahusha or Jesus, as Americans know, as the English name. It's a warning that this is what the lake of fire is going to be like. It's nothing but darkness. There's no light there at all. And it's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Eternal torment forever. Eternal over and over atrocious smells so this is going to be God's way of calling people out of the darkness to him to Yahusha to repent of being a sinner and realize they're a sinner who needs Yahusha say buy a bunch of glow sticks no electricity but they shine some nice bright light you can freeze them put them away obviously your freezer won't work at that time but for now you can freeze them I mean your freezer will work for a while but yeah you're not gonna have electricity to run it
strong concern over whether the U.S. is actually prepared to respond if our power grid is compromised to cybersecurity expert Morgan Wright. Morgan, uh, ironically, I think where I read is that one of the good things we have going forward is our grid is so old, it might, be, uh, <laughs> it might not be smart enough to be compromised. Yeah, look, uh, all you have to do, Charles, is watch a natural disaster and you'll see that um, our power grid is still fragile. We're doing a lot better at protecting it, but that's the problem. You know, it's kind of the analogy of saying, well, I can go two rounds with Mike Tyson back in the day. Yeah, well, you still can't go 15. We've got to be able to go that full 15 rounds and survive a direct attack. Look, Russia's been using Ukraine as their punching bag for a lot of years, so our lessons we need to learn are from watching what they're doing in Ukraine right now. Yeah, I remember uh, it wasn't long ago when our, we had a major power outage in the Northeast that, that was caused by a small incident in Canada. So. Uh, it, it, it stands to reason we're extraordinarily yes. vulnerable, and we've been vulnerable for a long time. What, why don't we fix this? But, you know, if you look at the patchwork that is called the energy grid, I mean, it is a collection of a lot of different things, a lot of different power stations, a lot of different technologies. They're transitioning, trying to make things more network-oriented, trying to beef up their cybersecurity, but that brings its own problems because now we're trying to connect older systems to network technology, and that's one of the flaws that they took advantage of in the Ukraine attack. They, they attacked these cables that connected the power systems to the computer networks and uh, physically damaged them. So, yeah, there's a lot of work we still have to do on this, Charles, but the biggest thing you're talking about is that recovery piece. We know we're going to get attacked. The question is, how fast can we reconstitute and recover our energy? Because if you want to go after a nation, uh, as was Deidre was saying, that other thing, it's a maximal war. Go after their power, go after their water, and you right. can bring a nation to its knees. And go after their mind and have full control over them. Which is then called the mark of the beast, the RFID chip that will be injected into your hand or into your forehead. And that's how the devil will get control over your mind. Don't allow this to put fear inside of you, allow us to prepare you and have peace that you know what's to come and it's not gonna come out of nowhere like you ran into a brick wall. Thank the Lord for revealing this to you. All glory to God always. God bless.